there are so many reasons why you may want to add the apical two and three chamber views to your cardiac examination. And there's a link in the description below where you can read through some of these reasons. In this video, I'm going to focus on the hand movements you need to make to obtain these views and some things to look out for in the views themselves. I'm going to use Doppler, the Shetland Sheepdog, as my model today, but the same movements apply to cats as well. It's just going to be a case of smaller patient, finer, daintier movements. First of all, we need to get our four chamber view with our marker towards the patient, place it on their chest, and you want to make sure you're as apical as possible. Remember, you cannot be too apical. You'll fall off the end of the heart and lose your image completely. You can definitely be too far towards the base. So if your image is something like this, that's not a four chamber view. There's only two chambers. So you need to lift the tail of your probe, bringing the atria into view and then slide down as far as you can so that you're stretching out the ventricle to be as long as possible. Once you're happy with your four chamber view, you're now going to twist anti-clockwise to get a two chamber view. As I twist, the right ventricle is disappearing from my image and I want to keep going until it's gone completely from my picture. You want to get your left ventricle and left atrium as vertically down your monitor as possible. And it's the two chamber view, so you just need the two chambers. Left ventricle, left atrium, and you'll have the left atrial oracle or appendage in your view as well. This is particularly important for cats where you would check this for thrombus and you might do a pulse wave Doppler to look at the velocity of blood flow in the appendage as well. It's not quite so important for dogs, but it will be there in your view. Just be mindful if you're judging the severity of mitral regurgitation from this view, that you are actually cutting through the commissures in the two chamber view. So the severity is going to look worse than it would in the four or three chamber views, or indeed from your right parasternal views. Now to get to my three chamber view, I'm just gonna carry on in that same direction. So just twisting a little bit more, with dogs, you may have to just lift the tail of the probe ever so slightly. With cats, it should just pop into view by default. The reason this is called the three chamber view, well, it's not really three chambers, but we count the aorta as a chamber. So you have left ventricle, left atrium, and your aorta. You should clearly be able to see the aortic and mitral valves in this image. I hope you found today's video useful and interesting. Remember the two and three chamber views are just additional views you can add into your examination where needed. They're not core views, so don't feel under pressure to add them right away if you're not quite ready yet. If you are relatively new to ECHO or you're struggling on your own, there's a link in the description below where you can check out our echocardiography training program. It's designed to bring you from beginner all the way through to fully confident with all of your echo views and support you for life. Wherever you are with echocardiography right now, you can also book a call with me and you can discuss where you are, what you're struggling with and how I can help.